All right. Welcome, everyone, to episode 28 of the uh, Gundam Explained podcast. It's cool that getting to do this live again. I think it's pretty fun. I like that little opening uh, video I slapped together because the song slaps. Um, but yeah, lots to talk about today. Uh, there's a new uh, Hayaku Shiki, that uh, robot spirits, or metal robot spirits Hayaku Shiki that's coming out. Some other cool um, Gundam stuff coming out in terms of robot spirits that I'll show in a second. Some cool Battle Operation 2 news, new map, some new suits. And I'll kind of, one of the suits I wasn't too familiar with other than seeing it in Double Zeta, and I'll kind of talk a little bit about it. And then, because of a recent video on the Zagok, we'll probably talk um, a little bit about the Zagok. Um, so, yeah, let's uh, let's see if you haven't um, subscribe. Uh, there's a giveaway going on because I'm at, what, 780-something. Between 8 and 850 subscribers, I'll then do the giveaway and give away some stuff. Um, it will be... Uh, uh, I'll... The, there's a video in the description for the giveaway video of like the last uh, giveaway I did, and um, and in that the, the instructions are to put something in the comments you'd like to get something reasonable because I'd like to like pick out something cool that uh, that kind of means something to you. Uh, try to keep it less random, uh, but hey, if you like surprises, I'm I'm in for that too. Um, but yeah, what else is there to really cover? You know what I think? Yeah, that's right. What did I get recently that's Gundam related? Well, uh, let's see if I can pick this up without dropping it or breaking it. Uh, one thing is I talked about getting that um, Yokohama Robot Spirits uh, uh, RX-78 F... What is it? Like FP-00? I don't know. It's not RX-78-2, so it, it's not uh, coming to mind. But then I bought the little docking base thing, and it was not expensive at all. It's pretty cool. I'll probably do a review of this. Uh, here shortly. I don't know how I feel about the 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 docking thing itself, but uh, um, I'll do a review on that so I can kind of talk on it. Uh, another thing uh, is this uh, 08 MS Team Blu-ray to add it to my personal MB server, where I use that when I'm doing my research or when I'm doing my review videos. So uh, you know, currently I'm going through MS Igloo, kind of doing a review on those, talking about the the either the mobile suit or the unit, whatever is kind of standout um, to that episode. But I also want to get into 08th MS team because that is a series that a lot of people consider the top of their favorite when it comes to UC, maybe Gundam in general. And here's the thing. I love it. I love 08th MS team in terms of the mobile suit design, the combat, um, kind of the premise too. But the characters, the art style, some of that stuff it just doesn't resonate with me. But I want to go through it and I want to dive deep into it. So uh, plan for that coming up here soon. So what I'm about to do is transition. And I realized right after I hit live is I forgot to add in the browser where I do. So we're going to see me do that live. Why don't we do that? And while I do that, you can see that little uh, thing at the bottom about emailing uh uh, if you want to like send an email in for something, yes, yeah, see, I'm trying to multitask and it's uh, very difficult. But no, yeah, uh, Gundam explain at gmail.com. If you want it, to, it's easier for me to go through that way to um, grab some uh, like anything questions. If you want to like rant on something that has to do with Gundam, that would be cool. Um, there's actually some cool comments uh, that I'm going to get to near the end. Um, that's kind of, you know, related. So, like, I'll go through YouTube comments, but I also want to start maybe slowly transitioning to doing it um, through, like, email because there's just so many I have to go to. And and just because someone posts a comment on YouTube, I don't think that means they want me to read it necessarily. I don't know, but we'll see. Um, and again, yeah, 780-something subscribers. Um, but also, if you really just want to listen to this audio form, again, it's live. This is the second time I've done this live, 7.30 p.m. Central, Thursdays. Um, I'll have the audio form up shortly after, and it should be on all four, uh, podcast um, platforms, whatever you use. And if there's if it's missing somewhere, just let me know. Um, all right. So, yeah, just to kind of look at some of the previous videos I did. So, uh, you know, for one thing, I'm kind of changing up the thumbnail look, and I'm open to uh, critiques on that. Just want to kind of simplify it a little bit. 
So I had the uh, the GM Quell Robot Spirits review go up. That was a sick mobile suit to review. Anything Titans, anything in that timeline is so awesome to to look at. Um, and then uh, the Zagak over Jabiro. Jabiro? Jabiro? Hmm. I'm sure Robert will correct me on that. But um, that was just the episode one of the second series of MS Igloo Apocalypse W079. So check that out. But it really f focuses on a kind of z a custom Zagok. And that's what got me to want to do a deep dive on the Zagok on this episode. You know, initially when I saw the unit in the original Mobile Suit Gun W079, I thought it was a little ridiculous. But it was cool nonetheless because it gave off a bad guy vibe. Um, but uh, I got the Robot Spirits. Char's custom Zagok, and the form, as silly as it looks, it makes sense in a practical manner. The engineering of the unit itself didn't really require a lot of, um, uh, I guess, crazy, outlandish, and weird. It, it just makes it a uniform. It, you know what? That even makes me think I should get a Gumpla of Zagok. That that will be next up. Um. Yeah, so that's that with those videos. Yeah, any comments or suggestions about the videos, let me know. Uh, but I think if I'm not missing anything, I'm just going to jump into news. But before then, um, Zionic Shadow, good to see you. Uh, Mechanic, the mechanic. I've got a video with them coming out Saturday. I don't normally post on Saturday, but it's a surprise video. Um, and Robert, as always, the, the sniper of comments. So good to see you guys in there. Um yeah, let's uh, let's move on. So, this is very interesting. They've got this um, Hayakushiki Kai coming into Gundam Battle Operation 2. And now that I'm reading this out loud, this, something just came to me and I'm about to get to that because it's another segment here. Um, this, is, this is awesome. It just it, Gundam Battle Operation does not fail when it comes to coming out with new suits. I haven't been able to play as much recently as I normally do. I've been playing a lot of Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 on the Switch. It, it's, it's really good. <laughs> haven't played that. And I go through phases with Gun and Battle Operation. I think I've said that here. Um, although I've been playing with some of the crew lately um, in the Discord. So, you know, some I've got to mention. Jump into our Discord. There's some cool stuff going on there. Um, but yeah, j uh, looking around here, it looks like there's also going to be some exclusive pilot items. And it looks like they're trying to give off a Quattro vibe. So you've got that there too. Um, and the Game Alk. So, heck, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. But this is a cool suit. And this is from Double Zeta. And this is one that is not talked about too much as, as far as I know. Um, but it could certainly be uh, one. It's, it's just one of those suits that's very unique. It's very interesting. Not talked about much, but it is awesome looking. It takes a lot of that Xeon, Neo Xeon style sensibilities and everything. So it's very cool. Um, let's see. Um, there's that. And I thought there was the other, you know what? There was another link. I must not have it unless that was just posted in our wonderful discord. Always thanks to everyone posting the Discord. Maybe I can pull that up real quick. Um, I thought I had a quick link to that. Oh, no. That was the turn off the everyone. The everyone can get a, a little annoying. Let me, uh, let me pull this up. Because I really want to show off the map. Because in Gun to Battle Operation 2, there's going to be this new map. And I'm pretty sure it was posted in here, let me zoom out a little bit on that. Um, let's see. Uh, well, if, uh, oh yeah, there we go. Okay, and this was from Zionic Shadow, so thanks for posting this, because I saw this and it blew my mind. So this is, it's called Underground Base, right? But I'm thinking it's, it's it, it has to be Jabiro, right? I'm trying to think of, um, well, and I'm thinking back, what was it, um, uh, Char's counterattack, um, there was kind of an area that looked like this as well, um, with quests and what's his name, uh, I can't believe I'm forgetting that, the name of the guy that, uh, wanted quests to get with him, not, uh, Hathaway, but that other guy. Oh, anyway, yeah, looking at this, very cool, I'm, I'm glad there's a new map, see, that's one cool thing they're doing, 
that Halo Infinite's not doing, and that's throwing out these new maps. I know this has been out a lot longer, but, you know, uh, what can I say? Um, okay, yeah, that's cool. So, what I wanted to get to was, so, they announced this Hayakushiki Kai, right? But then at the same time, um, Premium Bandai announced a pre-order starting soon for the Metal Robot Spirits Hakushiki Kai mass production type. Now, so many things I like about this are, one, it's Metal Robot Spirits. Two, it has the real type markings on it I'm a huge fan of. And that shoulder cannon. I, I'm a sucker for shoulder cannons in, in UC. Um, here's the thing, though. I mean, if you look at the head, it's not a typical Hayakushiki because this is the Kai. So I probably won't pre-order this one. As cool as it is, I already have a ton of pre-orders going on already. There's all those 08 MS team uh, robot spirits coming out. In fact, and do I have that link up? Yes, I do. So this... I went to Hobby Link, Link Japan to order. I've been waiting for this option set two to come out. And this is this is sick. Like, look, you get uh, one of the ships, uh, you get the tank, and you get little figurines. I mean, as far as I know, is this the first time they've had scaled figurines uh, in the Robot Spirits line? And a little table and chairs for them, a little tent. Um, uh, and then, yeah, connection pieces for that. And then just some other parts. Um to simulate some uh, scenes from or with MS Team. There's so many of these coming out that it's really hard to really jump into anything else. And um, and so, yeah, looking at this, I mean, I love this. I love, we've got thrusters, effect parts. Uh, we've got the explosions. So anyway, e -Night Media, I've, I've bought from this many times when something has been sold out somewhere else. So check that out. Um... Yeah, and I wanted to jump into the to the chat real quick. Um, Zionic Shadow with the Goof Custom Anime version. Yeah, that's another one coming out uh, for pre-order. I'm definitely pre-ordering that one for sure. Um, uh, Zionic actually did a picture in Discord about it. Um, again, to go with, oh wait, the MS team, that shot in the city, uh, or that scene in the shitty, uh, the shitty. <laughs> that scene in the city when they're fighting is just sick, like, I loved like how they're like hearing, you know, the the team that's in that uh, vehicle is like hearing something coming, and I just I just love how that whole thing was put together. That's why I'm saying oh, MS team has some of that top tier stuff. And let me uh, let's see, I got to scroll with my finger on this uh, laptop here. Um, oh, Robert's correcting my pronunciations. Thank you, Jot uh, Jotunheim, but it's Jotunheim. The J is silent. That has to do with the MS igloo. Um, so Mechanic is saying uh, Glemmy Toto, but I think Red Axis is right. It's Gune. It is Gune. He was with, um, yeah, he was the one that was. So thank you, Red Axis. Yeah. Or thanks, everyone, for contributing anyway. Um, yeah, that's the case. Uh, does my friend want to say hi real quick? My friend has been uh, dying to say hi. Hi. Uh, okay. Okay, friend. Unless you're going to show yourself, then you may go back to your dungeon. Okay. All right. Now that was my son. He's excited about this. And so he wanted to be able to say hi. But anyway. Um, okay. So really what I was doing real quickly, quickly was showing what's new with Gunna Battle Operation 2. We've got this Hakushiki, and that's in line with now they're going to be selling one. Uh, Premium Bandai, probably not going to grab it. But the Gay Malk. So this is one, again... Um, no, people don't talk about this one too much unless um, eh, it's because Double Zeta seemed to have get, got a bad rap when I first got into Gundam. But now recently it seems that more people come around to it. And I'm glad because I love Double Zeta. I can watch it just as much as I, I like to watch Zeta in the original. Um, it's just one of those things where you can just have the show just running in the background and you never know what's going to happen. I mean, Haman Karn is in it a lot, and she's a favorite of mine. Okay, good. He didn't catch that. Um, so, hey, let's look at the game real quick. So, first thing is the design of this. I think this is completely sick. 
I, th this takes a, a lot from different Neo Zeon looks. Um, we can see the the shoulders, how awesome those are. The hands too, that look like they also uh, the fingers that you can fire from that. Everything about this is awesome. Like this is such a great design. And now I forget at what point again Char soon, yeah, is the pilot. I forget at what point she gets this, and she's kind of a crazy um pilot she kind of has her thing for uh flying mobile suits if you know what i mean uh, but i don't remember at what point she gets it um or what she uses first um in double zeta i'm gonna have to do another watch through oh mechanic uh fan of double zeta good to hear and so um Anyway, back to what I was talking about. So, AMX-015 Gamalk, mobile suit that appears in, in Mobile Suit Gundam Double Zeta. I can't say I even remember seeing a, uh, a Gunpla for it in the time that I've searched for Gunpla to build. But this is uh, uh, Neo Zeon, specifically Axis Zeon. The Mass Divers were the team. Um, let's see... Oh, of of build divers. Ah, that's right. I I need to get into build divers because I've I it keeps on referring or UC keeps referring back to build divers when I look it up. Um okay, so let's look let's look at this real quick. We're not gonna do a complete deep dive, but um the game alk is a new type use mobile suit intended for mass production in the last weeks of the first Neo Zeon War. The AMX-015 Game Alk was one of the pinnacles of Neo Zeon's new type weaponry development. In terms of firepower, the Game Alk was one of the most heavily armed mobile suits of its time with over 20 beam weapons mounted on a slightly larger than average mobile suit body. You know, that's sick. Furthermore, the Game Alk was also equipped with a Saikami system allowing its new type cyber new type pilot to control up to 28 child funnels and two larger mother funnels. So, what a mother funnel. I don't know if... That those terms have ever been used before. It's my first time, though, seeing child funnels and mother funnels used. So we have fin funnels, funnels. Are they just referring to it in that way because of their relationship to each other on the mobile suit? Or will they say, hey, this is the child funnel. This is the mother funnel. And that's kind of interesting. Uh, let's see. The mother funnels are similar to bits. Ah, that's right. The bits like we see with um, uh, the Kshatriya. Uh, for instance, and yeah, some other stuff like in uh, especially, yeah, the Hublé, the um, uh, the Hunter thingy, Jagged Doga, yeah, or Yagged Doga, Yacked Doga, because I think it's the pronunciations, right? The mother funnels are similar to bits. Each had their own generator and so did not need to return to the game arc to be recharged. That's cool. Each mother funnel mounted a mega particle gun and carried 14 child funnels, which periodically reached uh, periodically returned to the mother funnel for recharging. The pilot's commands were transmitted via a large psychom and control antenna on the game alk's head uh, to the mother funnels, which relayed the commands to the child funnels. With this armament, the pilot could conduct remote attacks from extremely long ranges. This potent remote weapon system combined with the mobile suit's own tremendous firepower made the game alk one of the most powerful mobile suits ever conceived during its time. And it sounds like it. I mean, this thing sounds like a beast. I um, and did it even say, let's see, I might be overlooking it because, oh yeah, here we go. So it can go up to a 700 cost. Uh, that's what it seems like it would be. And if, if we look at just how Gundam Battle Operation 2 has been able to incorporate the funnel system into its weaponry, um, I, I, I think it's going to work out awesome. Like with the, um, uh, you know what, when I have to recall a bunch of mobile suits, it's hard for me to remember, and this is an obvious one, you know, Char's mobile suit from Char's counterattack. In Gundam Battle Operation 2, um, it has multiple ways you can use the funnel system, which I think is excellent, so I can only see that being an option here with that, which is another cool thing, because it seems like with the Gundam Battle Operation games, it's it's on, I think technically it's fourth year, but more of it's third in North America, or something like that. Um, it they you would think they would just reskin some suits and tweak some things, but these sound like completely new designs that they're having to put together. So, you know, kudos to the development team on that.
All right, I'm going to move on, but for a second, I'm going to look at um, uh, the chat. Let's see. Um, I've seen some other people in here. Brian Roberts, good to see you. Harry Names, what an interesting name. Uh, anyone else I missed? Um, uh, Sazabi, thank you, Mechanic. That's, like, so obvious. I tell you, when I have to recall names of characters or m mobile suit names, it's like... It's just, I guess it's only been a few years that I've gotten into Gundam, but that's such a wide variety of ways to articulate my vocal cords and my mouth that, uh, yeah, it's going to take me some time. All right, well, um, let's jump ahead. So, he got to give it up to BJ Buchamp. Xeonic Scans, you might know the website, um, or Deaky Chew on Reddit. This fellow is quite the, uh, I guess he, what, what would I say? It's like he is such an awesome contribution to Western Gundam fans. Um, he takes interesting little snippets and side stories and things and translates them. Um, I, you know, I've, I've reached out to him to, to talk about some things I'd like to get um, a video just to really talk about the state of canon, because <laughs> canon is, it's not that it's a big deal to me, but I enjoy canon. I enjoy discussing what is canon, what is not. Um, so um, let's look at this. So he posted what became of Al after the events of um, War in the Pocket. It's a one-shot manga that was in MS Saga. Uh, that shows us a little bit about Christmas one year later for him. I'm not crying, you're crying. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to look at this a little bit. Let me see if I can. Uh, and it's going to be story time for a second. Get your get your tissues out. Um, okay, Mobile Suit Gundam, Double Eighty War in the Pocket. Snow started, hey, and here's another thing. I'm not even used to reading manga, but from what I understand, it's right to left. So bear with me. Uh, snow started to fall last night uh, and turned our city pure white. But it'll stop this afternoon. That's what they decide. It's always snowing uh, between the night of December 24th and the afternoon of December 25th each and every year. So. A couple cool things about this. I like that they had that's what they decide. And so the idea is in this colony, they have it specifically planned out to snow uh, the night of the 24th, you know, Christmas Eve, and um, the afternoon of Christmas Day each year. That is just another cool world building element. Um, I really like that. Uh, it's a kind that doesn't accumulate too much and doesn't melt too quickly with the rain. That kind of snow. It was almost a year after Bernie had died and that war had ended. So, if you haven't, check out 080 War in the Pocket or even my uh, review series uh, of the show. Um, it got super deep. Um, it, you know, the way it ends um, kind of makes you want to know what happens next with, with Al, you know? Uh, so they're calling, uh, Che Telcott, uh, plan on skipping out on cleaning again, aren't you? You guys never clean up after yourselves. Okay, and this, this is a really tiny font. Uh, it's the last day of the second semester, so you should be doing it today. Right? And then I go up into the, into the left, right? Ah, Al, see you guys. And then he's just taken off. There's something being said there. I can't see from here. And then hold it. You're not getting out of here. What gives Al's good? What gives? Al's good, but we're not? No, it's not. So you're so uh, quick to take Al's side, which is funny. At the end, um, Charlotte, no, what, what was her name? They'll, they'll tell me on another page. I remember at the end of 0081 in the pocket, she, she seemed very sweet to Al. I kind of I kind of like that. Um, and then we see him running, and then, um, and then I guess he's thinking back to when he was talking to Chris McKenzie at the end. No, that's not what I mean. If I fight, it's for my own sake. 
I'd fight because I'd be scared of being left alone, but that's what I would do. Another person may want to run away. Everyone has to decide for themselves which choice to make. If you fight, people may die, but if you don't fight, people may still die. There's no right or wrong choice to make. So he's thinking about this as he's running. He trips, looks up. And he sees that Santa balloon reminiscent of not only seeing a Santa balloon in the streets of uh, 0080, one in the pocket, but they use that as part of their plan of distraction with the um, the fight between the Alex and the Zaku 2 in the forest. And that tripped up Al um, when he was uh, running in the forest to try to tell Bernie they don't have to fight. And then we see Al standing here with a little... You know, he's, he's crying. He's sad. Um, and then this is Bernie speaking. Al, I'm probably going to die. But whatever happens, don't hate the Gundam pilot or the other Fetty soldiers. Because they're like me. Just people doing what they think is right. And I'm sorry, I have to look closely. Maybe I'm g- going... Okay, you know what? I, I spoiled how sweet this was, didn't I? Okay, and let me then move this. Maybe I'm asking too much, but don't hate them. And don't blame yourself either. Please, this is my last request. And then we see Dorothy. That's her name. We see Dorothy and I guess her mom walking along the the street. And then she sees Al. Mom, going home without me. Dorothy. And then Dorothy said, you skipped out on cleaning to come here? What the heck are you doing? And I think then she noticed he's crying. Um, and then it continues. So, let's see. I'm trying to be able to read this, but also not... Uh, Not uh, make it where you guys can't see this for the non-audio version. Uh, But then we just see a a shot of the streets and they're walking together. And he's like, "Uh, don't follow me anymore. Yeah, but you really upset me. Yeah, I guess she's really just trying to figure out what's going on. And then I guess he's thinking it is as Zeon Daikun once said, people must live together in harmony with nature. In order to achieve such consensus, people must possess a uniform, highly elevated and broad vision. And yet, the people of this earth attempt to monopolize the planet, count, uh, continuing to pollute the world in the name of construction. Why are we unable to trust in the self-cleansing powers of nature? If not, the earth will not endure the people can conform to intelligence and the environment. Hey, what gives? Why just stop all of a sudden? Um, if so, uh, then why are only the special? Uh, I'm sorry. If so, then why are only the species of animal that have been granted um, unyielding principles? Yes. All of humanity must become space noids and live in space while the earth must be preserved in its natural state as nature would have it. Um, and he's thinking about that. She's still running at him trying to figure out what's going on. He's just looking up uh, because the earth refused to accept the refugees of war. So it looks like people like that will continue to rapidly increase. And then we see some people that look like they're possibly in poverty, homeless, sitting there. And then we see uh, uh, Chris again. Al, I'm glad I caught you. I've been transferred back to Earth. And then you hear Dorothy. Hey, Dorothy, have you ever been to Earth? On a colony like this, you know... You'd expect the colony mirrors to be closed all evening. But on Earth, the sun sets far away on the horizon, over land, or even over water. And in autumn, the light causes the whole area to turn red. 
In winter, there are places where the temperature drops to tens of degrees below zero. There, the moisture in the air freezes and shimmers. It's so freaking cool. And I guess there might have been something else she said there, but I like how he's thinking. I was thinking of one of the last things, you know, Chris said to him. She was going to Earth so that that's where he sees, you know, or thinks about Earth. And then he seems to be in a more positive mood and he's talking to Dorothy in that manner. Does I want to go to Earth? To Earth. Huh? And then it shows the little city there. And then the colony, the colonies, and then to Earth. And you see a little globe and fin, which I know I didn't do it justice reading it just then with the tiny ass uh, font, but that was... Uh, that was lovely. That was special. I uh, I kind of liked that that continuation that I didn't know exist. I don't even know how long this uh, had been up for. Um, yeah, so thanks to BJ, Xeonic Scans, Deaky Chu on Reddit always has something. Yeah. So let's see. Um, let's see. Looking at the chat, any other cool stuff going on? Yeah, everyone's talking back and forth. 28 child funnels total. Oh, yeah, talking about... Uh, let's see. Okay. All right. Um, moving on, speaking of Dikichu. Okay, so... Something else uh, that uh, he was able to share, and this had to do with uh, um, UC Engage, because UC Engage, that mobile game that's going on in Japan right now, that I wish there was an English version. I and then it stopped working, and then I had to find this this like foreign app store that allows you to download apps um, from other markets. And so I downloaded it again to start playing it, but then it's it's really time consuming. I don't understand what's going on. I feel like I when I, when I play video games, I want to learn the systems. And so I was doing like translator, looking up everything. But so look at this. We're looking at that one um Engage Gundam uh that we've seen. Uh this one does it look a little different? The V-fin looks a little normal, so this could be a, a variation or whatever, but uh indeed uh, an IF unit of the Engage Gundam conversion plan that enhanced the concept of a rear support suit when the Engage Gundam was designed and operated, uh, equipped with a large number of high firepower armaments. It's always cool when they do that with mobile suits. Um, oh, and it continues. Uh, armaments at the expense of mobility and continuous combat ability. Eliminating the beam sabers in the backpack, it is equipped with high-powered beam cannons based on the data from the gun cannons, shoulder cannons, and the gun tank that were both active as support units during Operation V. Very cool that that's the callback. Other armaments include arm-mounted beam cannons based on the twin barrel beam rifle and a newly constructed four-barrel missile pod based on the three barrel pods on the leg of the Zaku II. Ah, so that's pretty cool. Taking some Zaku influence there. I like it. The beam cannons can also be used in a core fighter mode, and the core fighter alone has enough firepower to be utilized as a high-power support craft. Um... Wow, that uh, that is sick. I cannot wait for either a robot spirits or a, a gumpla of this. And speaking of core fighter, if you watch the latest MS Igloo review I did with the Zagat custom, sick, such a sick uh, um, uh, core fighter thing. The core fighters for the core boosters appeared. They're trying to fire at the Zagat. Um, I'd love to see that stuff in CGI. It looks great. Um, let's see. Um, so the other thing I was going to do, and I don't think, let's see, let me look at something real quick. Um, I don't know if I'll have time. There's this article I want to read, but I will save it. Um, what I wanted to do is look at a couple things. There was the, in the Gumpla and collectibles, again, um, join our discord, share your stuff. It's awesome. I might even have to, again, maybe make a separate channel for that because then it kind of gets lost in this. Uncle Tom posting his from Seed. That does look sick. Will got a few, and he's thinking of um, kit bashing them. 
That looks awesome. That's awesome. Very cool. If you can name these, please do so in the chat in the comments. Oh, and this is that uh, newer seed. That thing is awesome. Uh, I, I'm always forgetting these names, but yeah, that thing is cool. And that was uh, Windu. Um, okay, the Sank Kingdom. So search that name on Instagram. He's got some awesome pictures up there. I mean, look at this. Uh, the, the lighting, uh, the background. Let's see. I think there's some more. Um, oh, I think that was someone was flipping it around. And, oh, yeah. Here's some other ones that are really cool. Like, look at that. Look at the uh, the eyes on that. Very cool work here. So, you know, I, I enjoy action figure photography. I've done a lot myself. I've made multiple Instagrams based on certain properties where I've done that a whole lot. I've never really stuck with something. I even, for a time, did a lot of, oh, there's Uncle Tom, that for a while did a lot of um, Gundam stuff with Photoshop and backgrounds and all that, but just I haven't really had the time to do that, and I want to get back into it because this stuff looks sick. Yeah, I mean, these are these are great, great picks. So, yeah, check check him out, The Saint Kingdom, S-A-N-C, if I'm saying that right, on Instagram. I think I'm following them on Instagram, so you can, like, look at on the Gunham Explain Instagram, the followers. Um, and then some stuff I did, but it's not about me right now. Oh, Goof Custom, what we were just talking about. Very cool. Uh, oh, yeah, and that reminds me of something I'm going to get to in a second. So there's this, um, so Santo Bell is making a custom G-Savior unit. And to be honest, I think that's awesome because I'm a huge fan of the G-Savior mobile suit. He is as well. He was using a body of a gun EZ because that seems to be very similar. And he was then within a 3D program creating the parts and then uh, printing them with a resin printer. And uh, very cool so far. That was like uh, part one. And I think he had some others. Um, and the, I meant to have them set, maybe I can get to them real quick. Um, let's see. No, I think that was the latest. Yeah, that was the latest one. So anyway, you know, I'm going to have to make a separate channel, I think just for people to show off their stuff, because there's a lot of just normal conversation we have about Gundam things in general. So I want to kind of separate that out. So that's cool. Um, let's see. You know what? I am going to go to the Zagok next because I totally forgot to do that earlier. Oh, Xeonic Shadow Eclipse Gundam. Thank you. Um, of course, that's what that is. Oh, and Xeonic, I think you, you brought up the Zagok as one of your favorites, so this is a good... You know, unless I already went over this in a deep dive, I just don't remember. Um... But anyway, um, I probably won't read too much of it, but I just kind of want to get the general gist of what we're looking at here. Because in that last MS Igloo episode, we saw a Zagok. It didn't have the lower half of the body. The top half of the body was connected to a contraption. I think they called it the mobile diver. And then that itself would be connected to uh, an atmospheric reentry vehicle with different weapons. It had the beam scatter gun um, that was used in the finale before the pilot died, but it had some other... A weaponry used on it as well. Um, let's see. So the Zagok is one of the heavy mobile suit. Uh, is one of the heavy mobile suits developed by MIP, like the MSM04 at guy. It is viewed as a second stage amphibious MS, different from the MSM03 GOG. And let's look at that real quick, just to get an idea, because this is another goofy looking mobile suit that I've never really been into, but after seeing how cool the Zagok is, I might have to jump into getting a robot spirits of this because I think one does exist, a Veranime. Okay, so um, a first stage unit. Interesting, okay. And actually the, the at guy real quick. Yeah, another goofy looking one. I love it. I love the one that shows up in Double Zeta that's like has these cr uh, crazy colors on it. Um... Okay, the Zagok's final design was improved based on actual combat data from the GOG, but this delayed its development and the Agai was completed before it. Among amphibious mobile suits, 
maybe there's some uh, edits that need to be made here. The Zagok's focus is on ground combat. Besides using both air and water-cooled radiators, it also has chemical fuel rockets for jumping in uh, addition to thermonuclear water jets. The Zagok is also uh, designed so that it can perform anti-air combat as well as search operations on and above the water surface, duties that the GOG could not the Sagak's specifications are superior to those of the mass production mobile suits by the Earth Federation forces at the same period. However, in return for high performance, it is difficult to pilot. Furthermore, it is a costly machine because it lacks parts compatibility with the GOG. Very interesting. Um, and so, yeah, a few of the weapons, the 240mm missile launcher, mega particle cannon um, that's in the hands, but also the iron nail that are on the flexible arms and um there is that um uh one of the zagaks oh the uh custom shars custom went right through the torso of an rgm 79 um man i forget did i do a review of that i i always there's so many i gotta i gotta look back anyway let me take a quick drink okay with the success of the msm 03 gog and the msm 04 at guy or AC guy, the MIP company rolled out their own mass production amphibious mobile suit for the Principality of Xeon's Earthside forces. This line of amphibious mobile suit, known as the Zagok, became the most successful line used by Xeon forces during the One Year War. The Zagok was manufactured at the California base on the same production lines as the GOG. The Zagok's most famous exploit was the Principality of Xeon's attack on Earth Federation forces headquarters at Jaburo. This was November 30th, 0079. The Principality of Xeon launched a surprise attack on Earth Federation's underground fortress. One of Xeon's primary attack groups was armed, was formed by multiple Zagaks, as well as a few other amphibious mobile suits led by Shar Aznable in his MSM 07S Zagak commander type. So, do they still call that a custom? It might be wrong of me to be saying custom when it's really commander type. I need to remember that. I know for some of his suits, it says custom. Um, unless I'm incorrect, but, but it is custom. Um, not going to dive in too much more. Even after the one year war, uh, several Zagok sporting a new, uh, dark green color scheme, um, were used by the Xeon remnants in UC0096 during the attack on Torrington base. One of these units was destroyed by the Byerlint custom. One of, uh, another favorite of mine. I, I keep eyeing the robot spirits of the Byerlint on eBay decently priced it's just one of those things where okay if i buy this that's my budget for the month so you know what? that's really cool that they show this because in the 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 shars version that i have you can actually take the head apart like this at the top here it's really just for changing the eye around but i like how they made it seem to be similar to this part it would be cool to have a gundam action figure and I guess Gunpla are like this, but I mean more of where parts can come off that kind of make it look like it's being worked on. Gunpla kind of do that. They kind of have like inner frames, but a lot of times the engineering is made just for the point of uh, articulation and stuff like that. But yeah, a lot of the real grades do a good job with that, actually. Oh. Oh, from the origin. It's like a buff one. That's pretty cool. Oh, and then here we go, the Xeon Remnants version. Very cool. Yeah, you know what? When it's in that color, it looks more mean. Plus, it has like that sleeves look, right? So is that even really Remnants? That's sleeves. Um, Yeah, so very cool. Oh, yeah, is it, don't they, uh, or I'm thinking of something else. Yeah, never mind. I was about to say Thunderbolt, but that was a completely different one. Um, Okay, Hitoshi Fukuchi version. I kind of like that. They kind of have some different design measurements, or what am I trying to say? Proportions. A uh, little cute guy right there. So, very cool. Okay, so, yeah, that is yeah, a little deep dive into the Zagok. Um, I guess there's really not too much to it, really. I mean, but it is a cool suit. And uh, that, that custom that we see in MS Igloo is... Pretty interesting way to go about it. Okay, so I'm gonna look at comments. Milpo Schlint, Schlint, 
which I think is how it's supposed to be pronounced. I learned a lot of history on this guy. And there's going to be that surprise video going up Saturday is actually going to get into that as well. But tons of people commented about he's real, he's real. I think that's the kind of um, this campaign to make him real, to, to reel him into existence. I don't want to say any more. The video coming out Saturday explains a lot. Um, <laughs> that's funny. It's kind of back and forth on there. Yeah, um, that kept going, that kept going. I'm not going to read all these, but it's really cool if you want to go to that last podcast and see. Um, okay. Here we go. L, what's up, L? Uh, I always feel like Amaro versus Slender every Gundam encounter. And yes, brother, you can never have enough Zaku 2s. <laughs> uh, Will is definitely an officer type. Keep him in the back. Also, the concept of Machine Man is interesting. I personally think those two things are indeed contrasting, yet they have the potential to complement one another by the combination of raw skills from the pilot and capabilities of the mobile suit. The pilot unlocking their new type ability comes through what I believe, empathy, and how just like any animal, that sense will evolve. You know, I'm glad you brought that up. And Slugger Law, we need Captain Takwan versus Amaro in the, in the big road next. Um, don't know Captain Takwan. Unless I'm supposed to. So I apologize. But no, that reminded me of the poll. So the poll from uh, the last podcast, right, right when it was done, I was like, who's the better pilot, Amaro Ray, Shar Aznable? Right. And really, 62 percent said Amaro Ray. And I think that's true. That kind of goes to L L's comment there. Um, I don't disagree. I, I think that's the case. But, you know, the next one that I will put up and I wonder if I should put this up right now. OK, who has the. Better mobile suits. And why? Ah. Amaro or Char. So that I think is interesting. So that poll's going to be up, obviously, right now. Because um, I'd like to go over that and the other one. I like to see why, too. Um, you know, it's very hard. You got an RX 78 2 versus Zaku 2. Those things are both cool. And I guess better mobile suit. Does that take into account who's a better pilot? No. It's going to be based on the. The suit. So let's say it was Amaro in an RX-78-2 versus a clone of Amaro in the Zaku-2 custom or commander type. Right now. All right. Uh, Steam Teams. Oh, this is from the poll. Awesome. It's got to be Char for me. Despite being in normal mobile suits in 0079 until he got an incomplete Xeon, he's proved that a mobile suit's performance doesn't determine the outcome of battle and instead, it's the pilot's performance and abilities that can make it happen. Dude's a legend. I mean, he is a legend. Um, yeah. So thanks, Steam Teams. I'm glad to see that perspective on here. Abraham Lincoln. In my opinion, when all is said and done, Amar was the better pilot. They're both great, but Amaro defeated Char many times, and their duel at the end of CCA cemented this. However, while Amaro is a better pilot, I do think Char is a better character. Oh, that's certainly true. Kenny Allen. That's true. The only time Char was lucky to defeat Amaro when the RX-78-2 stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Xeon, but this time to Char wasn't lucky to defeat Amaro in Char's counterattack movie. Sazabi wasn't a little tough. What wasn't tough against the new Gundam? Uh, sorry, I might have butchered that. Um, let me do some likes here. And sorry for the person that I accidentally disliked. I need to go back and find that. But, um, yeah, that was, th that was kind of interesting, even considering that Char helped the new Gundam Psycom system. Um, Ray Sawarti, and that's from the Demise of the Zuda. Imagine your muscle is so powerful, it burst out and break your flesh if you flex it too hard. Thank God Evolution solved this problem before it even happened. That's pretty funny, yeah, because they show where they're in the Zuda going as fast as possible, and then it just breaks apart. That go that would be an interesting, interesting, How? what, what am I thinking? Like, there's this army, clone army, and then, like, the people are going so fast that they, like, burst um, out of their skin. I don't know. What am I talking about? Uh, Robert, uh, from uh, the last podcast, everyone try to guess which is the original, which, oh, yeah, when um, 
his drawings that's on that last one so yeah thanks thanks robert and then yeah he has it where there's like the original advanced of what he's built kind of like when you see you know normal or full armor or space version um another comment from robert oh and then a little back and forth here from robert um Oh, yeah, people talking about the artwork. Yeah, because even if you go to um, the Discord, there's um, a fan art section where you feel free to drop in fan art. And yeah, it could be yours or it could be someone else's you found. Um, more common, uh, more Haman Karn, the better. Let's see, Robert, um, again. Are you saying that it was supposed to be the OG hero for Gundam? Hmm, maybe. We'll see when we see that video on Saturday. Joshua Mendoza, to be honest, everyone likes to forget that Milpo has been in every series, even if at Easter Egg. I appreciate the nod to him in the Battle of Torrington base. He cleaved those Zaku's pretty fast in that GM. So I put, wow, that's a cool Easter Egg I never knew about, but I want some deets, unless someone's just saying that, to put it into the universe to make it true. That's cool to me. Mechanic the Mechanic, if it wasn't for Milpo Amro. Wouldn't have made it as far as he did. Best side character ever. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks, Nick. And then Robert. Um, let's see. Something about on Discord. Oh, about Harrow's plot armor. Yeah, check out the Discord. I guess, yeah, Robert really likes to get uh, comments on his interactions uh, with everyone, either, either on, either on uh, YouTube or Discord. Um, yeah, thanks, Robert, again. Alstraza Palazzo, great video. I wonder what Xeon manufacturer developed the parts and blueprint for the camphor before the Cyclops team assembled it. Xeon or Zimad? Well, you know what? That is a great question for uh, me to look up right here. So let's see that. Um, uh, no, 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 that's not it. Uh, uh, manufacturer, Xeonic. So that was Xeonic. And when he's talking about the Cyclops team assembling it, they had to take it apart and have it in parts when they snuck it aboard the colony and wore in the pocket to where then they rebuilt it back. So that was Zionic. The Zionic company rival is Zimad company. Okay. So cool. Hope that answered your question. Kenny Allen, the Red Comet got lucky once when facing against RX-78-2 with the Zion, but the Red Comet wasn't this time lucky when he... As the Sazabi got beat by the new Gundam. Sazabi was a tough Rigazi, but not tough enough against the new Gundam. I got Amor Ray, a poster board of the Gundam. Sorry for you, Shar fans. <laughs> um, no, it's cool. I mean, it, 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 the Rigazi, uh, just bringing up Rigazi. Rigazi? Rigazi? Rigazi. Um, let's see. Kamikaze. Quad? Is that Quad 7? I feel like, uh, oh, and this is from an old video. This is from, what is a new, old, less than a year old. What is a new type part one? I f oh, this is a story. Get ready, people. I feel like it's somewhat roughly convoluted and over or under explained, but it looks to me like new types are implied or meant to be the first humans who've stepped onto the next threshold of human evolution, or at least a starting point towards it. While not in Gundam Universe, the Tenshi Muyo's book, specifically in the GXP novels, Tenshi's granny, don't call her that if you want to live, explains that a civilization is considered a young primitive civilization until they solve three universal problems all space-faring civilizations have to overcome on their own before they will be considered maturing by the rest of the advanced universe. I might get these wrong as it's been years since I read it, but here they are. Number one is the creation and discovery of universal energy source solution to non-renewable energy. Number two is the creation of technology to become free from the confines of gravity technology to go and live or travel outer space. Number three is the creation of a planet-wide single governing body that represents the planet civilization as a whole. Okay, before I go on, if we were to apply this to real life, um, in terms of human beings, you know, sometimes, you know, I'm kind of a practical guy. I'm not super religious. Over the years, I've become a little more spiritual just due to experiences. And the more I research history and anthropology, the more I question what humanity is. And so if we were to go by these principles... We have to understand that, like, are we saying that it is possible that we were space faring, faring in the first place? Were humans potentially ancestors of 
um, something, and I don't know what that is, that gives us the potential to, uh, you know, because we don't treat the earth in a harmonious nature with the rest of it. Um, I know that's getting a little woo-woo, but I, I think that's kind of an interesting little conundrum there. Uh, how does this tie into new types of Gundam? Well, as far as I can understand, humanity have become capable of overcoming the over-reliance over -reliance, sorry, on fossil fuels to an extent which led to the age of colonizing space. While not completely, they have started solving number one and number two in the earliest Gundam series, which brought about the birth of mobile suits, the mass production age of MS. This leads us to number three, which I think is the last hurdle humanity has to overcome to be truly an intergalactic civilization. At this point, humanity and space have only just started to evolve and develop new unknown abilities, which was dubbed uh, the new types. Unfortunately, as a young civilization, humankind was uh, still bound by stuff like racism, mostly due to fear of those who are different from themselves like new types, or perpetuated on purpose by those in power in order to keep people um, separated and unable to work together to overthrow corruption. That's how... I see it, really. Um, unless there's some more to it, like uh, when I was talking about stuff I've been researching, ancient history, to me it seems to point to there was a time in our past where non-homo sapiens that were uh, from the homo genus that existed were, you know, it could be Neanderthal, Denisovans, or another type we haven't discovered yet, because remember, Denisovans were very recent, so who knows what else is there, that we brushed up against and... For whatever reason, it was hard to live in harmony, and then racism really stems from the maybe people where their genetics are closely related to this other type of homo, but I really want to get back to what you're talking about. Okay, so, um, oh, and where was I? Okay, people on Earth feared people on space colonies. Thus, dubbing them space noise. But why? Why did people on Earth fear? Is it because they were dropping colonies? That's the only reason I could think. Um, especially due to the fact that they are, at least from a narrow-minded point of view, evolve into these new types with full capabilities still unknown. Um, it doesn't help that this happened at a time when such conflicts become involved in convoluted human interactions, which led to wars. Wars in which made it inevitable for new types to participate in and thus would become a stage where they would um, sorry, demonstrate their superior abilities. I'll bet this is mostly through destruction, thus clouding their kind in this long-lasting first impression image of being powerful beings of war and destruction. This image prevents the rest of humanity from seeing new types of evolved abilities from a different lens other than for war purposes. That's how we got the UC Gundam timeline. Very good points there. If you look at it closely, new types are actually what seems to be what we normally refer to as empaths, a bit more evolved in their abilities. Their mysterious powers give them the ability to connect mentally and interface with each other, as well as with their surroundings, uh, like with psychoframes. This empathic ability is what gives them that enhanced spatial awareness in the battlefield, especially in space. Imagine Professor X with the Cerebro. Because they feel the thought waves of others, even their enemies more greatly, they are able to react faster in battle. This magnified to even more elevated levels allow them to communicate or imprint towards other new types. It might also be the case that their powers, which mostly seem to rely on the powers of the mind or thoughts, works on something like a quantum level, since our thoughts are made up of energy signals, chemical reactions in the brain and body, as well as if you think about it, this ability to control interface, manipulate and energy on a quantum level might be the reason why we see these characters do the feats they have done in many series. I like what you're saying there. Um, you know, another thing I was talking about ancient humans, there is a lot of speculation that certain groups of ancient homos were um, what we today would consider autistic. Um, and the reason I say that is because I think there's this thing where being autistic means there's a mental issue. I don't agree with that. I just think modern society or the majority rules uh, is what makes it seem like someone that is autistic is an outcast. Um, and a lot of people with autism tend to be savants. There's a lot of times in, path, in the past where people that were autistic came up with incredible mathematics. And we can see a lot of ancient humans or some ancient types of um, uh from the hominids, um, did a lot of amazing math um, and measuring 
Stonehenge, other things that are now, well, go Beckley Tepe, things that are older than we thought, um, where we're seeing a lot of mathematics and astrology. If you're given, if it was limited technology at the time, the things they were able to um, create were quite advanced. And so I can see where, you know, that makes sense to where it's just another level of that. Another, And so I, I like what I'm reading so far because it's kind of in line with my thinking when it comes to who, what intelligent life is capable of, where we currently are as humans, where we could go, et cetera. Unicorn showed Benajer and uh, Full Front. Wait, I want to make sure I didn't. Yeah. Unicorn showed Benajer and Full Front will do a sort of time travel, perhaps just in their minds or actually physically. If you think about how in the MCU Ant-Man traveled uh, time via the quantum realm, it might give a glimpse that what I said above is correct about new type powers. And I want to add something else, too, when it comes to time travel is if the thought of how physical reality works, really all time is one thing. We are just existing in the moment. And time is just a perspective that humans have of their reality when really we are just stuck in it. And really all time exists all the time. And there's a lot of instances, uh, especially written in ancient texts, where dreams were able to tell of the future. Um, and a lot of times if you do research into theoretical possible time travel, a lot of it has to do with traveling to the future and not traveling to the past, even though in this case it was the past. I do think that's another good point you're bringing up when it comes to uh, new type powers. This also works with how we get the so-called new type ghost. The question about what happens after a person dies is easily answered by the idea that since the mind thought consciousness dies with the death of the body and brain, it would be imaginable that new types who can basically turn themselves into quantum energy or pure information bodies, uh, thought bodies, can free themselves of the confines of a physical body and instead continue to exist powered by whatever energy makes up the universe all over us. We just don't see them because they no longer have physical form, but new types can based on their present level of power usage. All in all, I think the entire new type thing reflects these things I mentioned quite well, albeit the Gundam series do not outright say they're psychics or mutant evolutions of humans who live in space to give them this sense of groundedness rather than focus on superpowers thing. Even so, the concept can be seen throughout even the other centuries like in Seed where coordinators replace new types or in Double O where GM particles replace the quantum thought particle of new type powers. We even get so far as to uh, see actual alien beings and actually evolved human beings in 00 Trailblazer, if I recall correctly. I haven't seen C to 00. I need to. But uh, Kamikaze, Quad 7, 0007, excellent, excellent post. I love this talk about new types. This is exactly what I've discussed internally it matches with a lot of my kind of spirituality things i have come to conclusions of from researching but keeping open-minded to what is possible um that there is more of a groundedness of i think new types uh, than it seems on the surface and that even to me applies with the force and star wars even though that gets a little more um or i don't know there's i mean if you think about what happened the um the shock um uh from Shars Counterattack, I forget what it's called. Um wow, I just talked so much. I'm about to fall asleep. But let's continue. Uh, Santo Bell, the Quell, almost a hazel. Love it. Yeah, I cannot wait for that hazel robot spears. L uh trailer bed is definitely a plus and the detachable magazine for your gun. You don't see that uh too often. Yeah, that's exactly what makes that robot spirits. Uh, GM Cole kind of like a all-around good buy, I mean, especially for the price. All right, for the giveaway, L wants a Zaku 1. <laughs> That's a good choice. That can be done. <laughs> uh, Robert, instead of a Team Titans variation, the GM Quill is a Team Titans variation of MS. Yeah, and I was like, that'd be an anime I'd like to see. That's pretty funny. Gump Lagoon, I really like the color scheme. Yeah, it is. it is good. Oh, and then I had a video. I accidentally posted it public, but I meant it to be um, unlisted. I think that's what you call it. Just so I don't mean to be on timeline, but it's there if you want to watch it. This is um, uh, a match I was doing with the Alex. I thought went pretty well. I, I don't consider myself like an amazing GBO2 player, but there's times where I think I'm just an overall better like support, not in using support, but supporting uh, the players and really kind of getting an idea of what's going on and making sure, because really I I can't go out there, exploit the meta and just 
overtake the game. But if I'm playing with a lot of people that are serious about having fun, um, it usually goes well. Santa Bell, go, go, go to Malik's Pew Pew. One of the best MSI. Never managed to get in GBO2. Love watching it work, though. I look like a rank uh, mature compared to half these clips. So I need to play more. But Halo and Gunplay keep me distracted. Yeah, I was distracted by Halo for a long time. And then after Halo, I was playing The Surge 2. And then I've been playing this Marvel um, Ultimate Alliance 3, which is great. And then the Demon X Machina came out on PC for free on the Epic Game Store. I think I'm going to be playing that. Um, and then Elden Ring is coming out, so... Uh, but I still... I need to do it, and we need to do it with the, everyone else in the Discord, like, on a Saturday or something, where it's like, okay, we're going to dedicate some time to play enough matches where we're getting everyone their dailies, but also getting in some fun matches. All right. Uh, Rasika Pradeep, does this transform? Oh, that was the cost signature. Uh, Double Zeta Gundam, no, it does not. It needs to. I mean, it's got the core top, it's got the... Booster, it's got its core bottom. I don't I forget the names. But that's a cool element that they're just not really exploiting with Gunpla. All right. Uh, did the browser just freeze? Um, okay. L, love your content, brother. Smash that like button. Good idea. If you haven't, hit like, guys. Uh, uh, oh, Smash that like button, fellow space noise. Exactly, Zig Zion. Uh, and uh, I used to play trumpet in middle school, just went down a lot of nostalgia listening to some of these pieces. Do you still play any music at all? I'm kind of a music guy myself. I've made some music, some songs. My brother and I recorded a metal song. Uh, I'm more of a drummer, but I like to sequence stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, Santo Belzagak, a mean, mean MS. Go. Uh, to love these, gotta love these amphibious suits, especially the Xeon Mono Eyes. High Gog would be my favorite of these. Ooh, that's a good one. Of these types of suits, but the Ag Guy is also up there. Gotta love a Bear Guy. Uh, those ship explosion scenes are cool uh, or good. Yeah, I made sure I added those in. Just the way they shoot it, I gotta say the cinematography of those CGI shows are pretty good. Xeonic Shadow. Zagok, my second favorite aquatic mobile suit, but number one is the Zagok E. Okay, so that's the last comment, but let's look at the Zagaki real quick. Oh, yeah, I think we're just looking at this, but yeah, that is a good one. Oh, and this was in uh, War in the Pocket, and they have a lot of robot spirits of these, so they need to do this. Yeah, the just the added element, the updated design. Yeah, that is definitely a sick-looking one. That definitely is. Well, guys... That is it for now. If I missed anything, I'm certainly going to add that in the next show. But, you know, thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Please join the Discord if you haven't. Again, giveaway going on pretty soon. Subscribe, like, let's spread the word on this. I'm having fun doing this. The more people get involved, the more I'm excited. The more videos I'll be able to do, the more deep dives I'll do. And I'm always open for if people have suggestions of some videos they want to see and all that. But, uh, yeah, um, hit me up at gunmexplain at gmail.com if there's anything you want me to read on air. I kind of like, for instance, that whole new type thing I went into, that dissertation someone put together. But, uh, yeah, anyone else can send something. I'd be down to, to read it. So, uh, 